So this particular circuit is a TNCS. As we can see, the earthing conductor comes out of the neutral link, which is the service cutout. I have a double pole switch and our service fuse, which typically um, 100 amp for normal domestic supply. So ZE, and we have R1, RN, R2. ZS, this is what we know it's made up of, ZS is equal to ZE plus R1 and R2. Remember, ZS is a measurement at the extreme of every circuit, so at the furthest point of every circuit, because it's the highest resistance for every circuit. We can work out the fault current and this would be a fault if it were to occur at this location here from line to earth. Let's give them some values. So because the line conductor is 1.1 ohms, chances are the neutral conductor will also be 1.1 ohms. And if they're the same length, same cable, you'd expect them to be. If it was a twin on earth cable, then this will be higher. It'll be proportionally higher, it'll be 1.67 times higher. Give ZE a value because it's a TNCS, the maximum value would be 0.35 for 100 amp supply. So this will give us a value of 0.13 for ZE. 1.1 plus 1.84 gives a grand total of 3.070 ohm. So that is ZS for this particular circuit, which now allows us now to calculate the fault current. So we will get a value of 75 amps will flow around this particular path. The earth fault loop path. A question I posed to various uh, comments was what would happen to the fault current if we had one midway in the circuit? So midway in the circuit well, these are circuit because remember anything to the left is the responsibility of the electricity company and this is us so this is our circuit so here is our conductors so if we were to have a fault midway between line and earth in that location well we know that resistance from uh, the resistivity video that resistance is proportional to length so midway between these conductors will be half these values so we want to do a fault which would be midway. How much fault current would flow if we had midway between these two points? So ZE will remain unchanged because we've not nothing to do with that. The bit that's going to change is R1, R2. So because it's resistance proportional length, we need to divide this answer by two. So we have 1.1 plus 1.84, and we divide. Why I put this in brackets? divide this bit by 2. So we have the Z, when we do this calculation, the Z will become, and it's not ZS, because ZS is the furthest point in the circuit, so the Z midway would actually be 1.6 ohms. Remember, it's only this bit that can change. So the R1 and R2 midway is 1.47 Add that to ZE, gives a total of 1.6. 
So the fault current that would flow in this location would be 143.75 amps. What you probably realise then is that obviously the reason we do ZS because it's the worst case scenario of that circuit. It's the lowest fault current in the circuit. Any fault that is closer to the origin of the supply, the fault current is going to go up and therefore quicker disconnection of that protective device. Remember, all of these calculations that we've just carried out here um, have not taken temperature into consideration. Uh, if you do 2391 test and inspection, then you do take the temperature consideration and further on in the qualifications that you may well be doing. But these are just basic calculations without temperature. Temperature, just a curiosity, would actually be affected in these two components here. 